So, today we'll be going over a weapon I've loved using since I started playing Warframe, and was funnily enough the first gun I ever got a ribbon for when I played on PlayStation. It's the generic assault rifle of Warframe, it's the Bratton Prime. So when it comes to the Bratton, I've always enjoyed using this rifle as it always felt reliable in my hands and felt very strong during the times I've played heavily on PlayStation. So let's begin today with a couple of free shots. So the Bratton has quite alright stats, it's not obviously the best, but it's not obviously the worst. It has a 26% status chance, has a 2.0 times multiplier, uh, but sadly it has quite low crit chance at only about 12%, which means this gun is usually built for, well, applying status, as it is obviously a status-based gun. Now, obviously when it swaps to incarnate, its stats will increase quite nicely. The crit chance and status chance both become about 30%, and the crit multiplier is now 3.0. Now the gun is purely not getting an upgrade. It's obviously got its downsides. Its reload speed is still 2.15 seconds, so when swapping between normal mode and incarnon mode, it is going to take about 2 seconds. Its fire rate, sadly, is going to decrease from 9.6 in base to about 5.7 in its incarnon. It goes a little slow, and obviously since it has an AoE attack, it has damage fall off about 100%. So, with the base of Brian, we see it's a rifle with primary slash damage. As you see as I shoot, you see mainly slash, puncture, and then impact apply because there's more slash puncture than impact. But after a couple headshots, as you see, the bottom of my cursor has filled up, meaning we can now proc the Incarnon. So, once you're on the Incarnon, it gets a similar um, look to the burst on, I guess. But now, when you shoot the gun before we attack a target, you see this is an AoE blast. It seems to look like heat, and you would be right, it does indeed apply heat. If I can get to just apply heat, there you go. It does indeed apply heat. It has about 200 rounds in the magazine. And it shoots quite nice for being rather slow. As you see, it still applies its impact, its slash, its, pun uh, its puncture as well, and heat. Primarily heat, but as you see, it still applies its modifiers. And even as it having no buffs, it's hitting quite hard, being able to kill that guy after <laughs> almost the entire magazine. But that's enough talking about the basic gun. Let's go ahead and get into the Incarnon Evolutions. Now, let's go ahead and cover the Incarnon Evolutions. When it comes to the Incarnate Evolutions, Evolution 1 will unlock the Incarnate for you, so we'll be skipping that. Next is Evolution 2. Evolution 2 gives us two very good options, Daring Reverie and Munitions Grit. To me, one of these is better than the other, but Daring Reverie increases your damage by a flat for, uh, 4, obviously. But with the channel ability active, you'll get an increase by 38 flat damage and get plus 50% ammo efficiency. Munitions Grit increases your damage by a flat 2, and Multishot consumes ammo directly from your capacity instead of your ma uh, magazine. And this will increase your damage by plus 54% and give you plus 20% multi-shot. So, when it comes to these two options, it's dependent. If you run a lot of channeled abilities that obviously need to consume energy and some of them need an enemy nearby, obviously go with Daring Reverie. Otherwise, I recommend going with Munitions Grit, even though it will eat bullets like crazy. Next up is Evolution 3, which gives us our next three options. Those being Mercenary's Chamber, Void's Guidance, and Gunsmoke Pickup. So, with these three, Mercenary Chamber will increase your ammo capacity by 1,125. Void's, Gui Void's Guidance will increase your accuracy and reduce your recoil by 60%. And Gunsmoke Pickup will give you a 20% chance for 10% ammo restored on a punch-through hit. And when it comes to these, Gunsmoke Pickup does not affect the Incarnon. Void's Guidance affects both the Incarnon and Non-Incarnon. And Mercenary Chamber affects only the Non-Incarnon. So when it comes to Evolution 3, two of these are better than the other. I really like Mercenary Chamber and Void's Guidance. I think Gunsmoke Pickup is not worth picking up at all. So, these two are dependent on your Evolution 2 option. If you want channel abilities, go with for Void's Guidance. If you went with the Bullet Hose option, go with Mercenary Chamber. We'll be going with Mercenary Chamber. Finally, we have Evolution 4, where we have Critical Parallel, Prelude of Might, and Survivor's Edge. Critical Parallel will give you 18% increase in your crit chance, and give you a plus 0.2 times multiplier addition on your crit damage. Prelude of Might will increase your uh, crit damage multiplier by plus 3 if you have less than 50% crit, and Survivor's Edge gives you an increase by 10% and 14% for crit chance and status chance, respectively. Now, they all affect the Incarnon and non-Incarnon form, but to me, two of these are better than one. Critical Parallel and Survivor's Edge, in my opinion, are much better than Prelude of Might, because I don't know many people who don't run at least some form of crit on their weapons. So, when it comes to the options of your build, if you're going for more crit focus, go Critical Parallel, but if you're going for a more mixed bag, go with Survivor's Edge. 
I will be going for Survivor Edge. So, now that we covered the Incarnon, before we get into it, uh, the builds, I'm going to go ahead and state this now. If you are a uh, more early game player, I will be giving you a build for the Bratton itself. Obviously, these Incarnons are not really easy to get. They're more of a late game thing. So there will be a late game build. But I still will be providing a build for the Bratton since it is a Mastery 8 weapon. And, well, it's not that hard to acquire. I think you can get this thing rather quickly and get it crafted rather early into the game. So... Let's go ahead and get into the builds. So, let's go ahead and get into the builds. Obviously do what this says, and you'll be appreciated even more. Anyway, we have an early game build and a late game build. But, the reason there is a late game and early game build, as I had stated in the evolution talk, I'm giving a build for the Bratton itself, and a build for the Incarnon and Bratton. Obviously, early game, you will not have the Incarnon, so these stats will be a slight change. Just... Think of them being a little lower, specifically the status and crit, but that will be about it. This build is still applicable because all of these mods are farmable. Rhyme Rounds is a little annoying to get, Malignant Force is easy to get, and all the other ones are quite easy. This is just in Nightwave missions. So, let's go ahead and see how these enemies hand handle it. So, as you saw, the enemies are level 100 because I wanted to show off the normal early game build first. So, as you see, it deals with Basic Butchers quite easily. Let's go ahead and get rid of the Ancient Healer. As you see, does it quite fast. Gets rid of him. What about the Corrupt Heavy Goon? Not bad. Gets rid of him easily. Crewman's down. How about Bomb... Uh, not Bombard. Um, Lancer. Where's the Bombard? Try a Bombard. How will he handle it? He dies rather quickly. With all the Slash I apply, they die rather fast. That's why most people build this weapon for... Status, it's it's a weapon that applies a lot of slash because it's primarily slash and it just goes right through any armor, health, it just shreds it, health. Even MOAs die rather quickly. If I could aim, obviously. And none of this involves an arcane, because obviously arcanes are not acquired really early. But say you did have the Incarnon somehow this early on, how would it handle it? I say it does quite well. I say it still does quite strong. But, obviously, this build here is used for people who do not have the Incarnon and is used more as a weapon to get you through the star chart, and that it can do quite well. Next up, let's go ahead and cover the late game build, which will involve the Incarnon. Now that we've covered the early game build, let's go ahead and get into the late game build, and you will see a lot of this will stay. But I have my reasons for some things changing. As you see, our crit chances are a little bit higher than the early game build, obviously, but our status chance is a tad bit lower because of... Galvanized Aptitude being a stacking mod instead of a flat mod. Galvanized Chamber, obviously, is also being a stacking mod, so our multi-shot is also not as high initially, and our fire rate is lower. Must be something I don't understand. I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it too much. But, as you see, I have Radiation Corrosive, and when I swap it over to the bigger, stronger Incarnon, it's, there it is, Heat, Radiation, Corrosive, as well as Slash, Puncture, and Impact Stone. Now, the reason I am running a full elemental build is because the gun is a status weapon. It's meant to be used that way. Obviously, the weapon can still crit, and I'm obviously going to let it crit. We're still going to use the same enemies. We're going to put them on steel path and max out their level. Now, I've decided to stop using the Oregon Battle Group and instead give you a mixture of enemies you will find in the Void. You have your Heavy Goons, your Bombards, your Crewmen, your, bu uh, your Butchers. There should be Lancers in here somewhere, but I think I forgot to spawn them in. There's MOAs, and there's Ancient Healers. So, how's it handle Ancient Healer? If I could aim. Please. It doesn't do that bad, but obviously I have piss poor aim. And these mods are stacking. So, how's it handle Lancers? Or Crewmen, sorry. I'd say that does quite well. Butchers, slaughters through them like a paper. How about a MOA? I'd say that does quite fine. How about a Bombard? Not bad. How about a Heavy Gunner? Not bad. But obviously, as you see in the bottom right, I'm running out of bullets. You're not supposed to stay in the base form that long. So let's go ahead and swap it. How does it handle now? Well, I say that's doing phenomenal. It's critting, obviously, so you're getting the bonus. It's status proccing basically all the time, so you're getting radiation, corrosive, heat, slash, puncture. You're getting everything you need. Pop the Incar on again so you keep going. And it keeps going. The whole point of picking the Incarnon evolutions we did is so you can keep repeatedly activating the Incarnon. 
but honestly, what if you mix abilities into it? I'll be showing off a couple of frames mixed with the guns, and then we'll be going to still path. So let's go ahead and get into the Warframe mixtures. So when it comes to frames that I would mix with this thing, since I see it as a status weapon, it's very dependent on who I feel like playing. Maybe Mirage. I would say Mag, but sadly it's iffy with how it works. But obviously, we're going to first start off with Hydroid. I really like my Hydroid. He's very beneficial for my builds because he is basically there to benefit the reason I don't like fighting enemies with armor. How can I how can I beat an enemy with armor? If I just shred through it. Simple as that. So let's respawn all the enemies. Now obviously not enemy not every enemy over here has armor. Well, that's still no issue for me. All I have to do is pop my plunder, because you obviously are going to use abilities when you do missions. Use nourish, even though I don't like using it usually, and Well. Seems like it's still shredding quite well. Goes through enemies like they're made of butter. Heavy goons just fall if they see me. Butchers are gone, they're gone, they're gone. Basically, everything still falls. But say you didn't want to use Hydroid. A lot of people don't like using them. I understand fully. Who else could you use? Mirage. Why not, right? She's still good. She still hits hard. She's got her clone. She's got Eclipse. Obviously, mine's not built fully up to what I would want. I would have to form her, but I still have a minute long uh, Eclipse and I mean, Hall of Mirrors. So, how does this work? Well, obviously, it's going to need to rank up. My mods are off. Not mods. My, uh, yeah, my mods are off. But look, still doing his job. Yeah, one kill, and I'm going crazy. Got my Encarno active, and with more, obviously, more people, you can shoot the floor instead of shooting the people with your Incarnate on. So when you have your Incarnate on, since it has an AoE blast, the fall off doesn't matter if there's a ton of enemies everywhere. Put the Incarnate on. But obviously, I'd still recommend shooting them. It does make it a little bit more effective. Once again, say you didn't have Mirage. Say you only had... Who else? Rhino. Rhino would do a phenomenal job here. Roar is very strong. And it does its job quite well. Well, how does he work? Get your energy, and let's roar. Obviously, it's not that strong of a roar, because I haven't built my rhino fully still. Oh, I'm the wrong color. Eh, whatever. Well, Carnon's on. How's it work? I keep forgetting I have rank up. I have rack up mods. I have to kill lower tier enemies first. Well, how's it work? I'm saying it's doing quite fine, even with four, and a very unoptimized rhino. Obviously, with rack up mods, you have to go for lower tier enemies before you start hauling ass onto the uh, stronger enemies. But as you see, even with a not optimized roar and just using basically a, a really iffy bane mod because my roar isn't that high, it's doing its job quite well. But obviously, these enemies are staying still, not moving a muscle. How does it work in Steel Path? So, I will see you guys in Steel Path. And here we are in the Steel Path. So, obviously, the mission has just started. I'm going to show you off how it kills some of the enemies that are obviously moving, attacking me, etc. And then, when an Acolyte eventually does feel like spawning, we'll do it on Acolyte, and that'll be basically the still path mission for us. So, obviously, the enemies don't even know I'm here, so let's kill some of them while well, they don't even recognize me. Still works quite well without abilities active, but let's activate a really weak plunder just to see how it works. And I'm just, ugh, obviously, it still does its job quite well. Why not? Pop a nurse, add some viral and everything. Obviously, still works quite strong, does, does its job quite well, and I don't seem to be struggling at all. All enemies are pretty much just falling if I see them. Ooh, free Argon Crystal. Nothing really seems to hurt me enough to where I have to worry about dying, and everything is just, well, falling over. I could obviously aim, though. But, obviously, what about an Exmas unit, or some heavy goons? Well, they want a heavy goon. And with that enemy, we're going to go and break that ahead of time. Let's see. Ooh. Some viral has been spread around. Let's keep going with that. And obviously, go for, try to go for headshots, but if you can't, just shoot them. But remember, don't stay in the uh, out of the Incarnon for long. You will eventually run out of bullets if you don't run Vigilante uh, Supplies, Rifle Ammo Mutation, etc. Because, like I had said in the Incarnon Evolution part of the video... This thing eats bullets like it's on a bargain sale, which it's not. Oh, here we go. Heavy unit has approached. We have a Leech Eximus. Oh, there went their armor, and it shred them quite well. So, I think it does quite well. 
I want to keep going throughout this mission to hopefully get a acolyte to spawn. I'm going to go ahead and do this so I can talk. But I will return to y'all whenever I get an acolyte to spawn. Finally one fucking spawns. I, I've had to do this mission three different times just to get one. All right, let's go. There he is. Well. Oh god, it was the one that could kill me too. It was the one with the Arc of Plasma because I've been magnetized. Oh god. That one actually could have easily killed me. Oh no. Uh, we're fine, we're fine. But yeah, it, as you can see, the, the little buff I have on me, this little weird little red thing, yeah, it's, it's magnetized me. It's why bullets are not missing anymore. Meaning that one could have one-shot me and ruined this whole thing, and I'd have to do it again. But thankfully, I killed it. And obviously, once again, there was another, uh... Uh, ba 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 uh, word. That was another Exodus hero. There we go, brain's working again. So, as you can see, the gun does quite well with being multi-elemented, very little crit focus on the weapon as well. Like, it's doing quite well. And obviously, as you see, I'm still trying to make sure I get consistent headshots because, as I have built into the gun, it's quite bullet-hungry. I mean, the Incarnon is like my savior for saving me bullets and not having to run vigilante supplies, but I still recommend people run that if you have the weapon adapters to spare, because it will help you in the end. As you can see, does quite well, even against Blitz XMI, basically anything with armor, anything that doesn't have armor because of the heat will get killed by it, the radiation helps, slash, puncture, impact, all that. All that's very useful, it's beneficial, and it makes the gun even stronger. So, uh, I'm going to go back to the orbit, and I'll give you my final thoughts on the Bratton Prime and Carnon. Overall, when it comes to the Brand Prime and Carnon, I really do enjoy this weapon, and I really enjoy its base gun as well. It's always been one of my favorite options whenever it came to playing. I always specifically went for this weapon, basically, whenever I played on PlayStation. It was my go-to. I usually used it for almost every mission. That and the Baza were, like, some of my favorite uh, rifles in this game. So... Obviously, if you want a good, reliable Incarnon, I do recommend the brand. Is it the best choice? No, obviously, you could go with literally the Torrid if you want to be boring, Latron if you want to follow, follow a certain meta. Burst on is very strong. I really do like it. The Boltor is very good. Soma, Strun, they're all very good options. But obviously, each one has their own niche, each one does their own thing, and each one has their own benefits. I like the brand, and I hope you will as well. But that'll be it for today. Make sure you guys hit that like button so you know, uh, so that I know you guys enjoy this content. And hit that sub button and the bell so you get post notifications. And whenever you sub, I understand that you like this content. And I do appreciate it. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace out, everybody.